Uh, ladies, it's an absolute honor to speak with both of you. Seriously, thank you for taking the time. Thank you thank so you. much for having us. Of course, I'm going to jump into this. Um, you know, really what I love about all the characters outside of the house is that there are moments when I think each of them could be the watcher. I'm curious as actors, did you both play the part as if you were? Did you have to make the decision as to whether or not your character may have been the watcher? Um, we didn't know. We didn't know. I figured it, it was Margot. I figured it was her. We didn't know, though. <laughs> I, I, but, we, you know, I jumped around uh, um, in every episode uh, deciding it was somebody else. Uh, and sometimes I did play it like I was. And I, mm, you know, uh, you know, we, we, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not, but I'm just saying, it's so because what if I was? We got one script <laughs> at a time, so we didn't know exactly what would be coming. So we, we weren't sure if we were uh, laying out facts uh, or A lying, lying. We didn't know. Yeah. yeah. I think the, I think the one script at a time reveal I think is brilliant. It, obviously for you guys as actors because the characters wouldn't know what's to come, which I think is so smart. Miss um, Farrow, you have a great line in the first episode where you talk about a baby cradle, uh, which of course made me think about one of not just the greatest horror films of all time, one of the greatest movies ever made, Rosemary's Baby. Um, that film is timeless. And I'm curious, horror is not a genre that always ages well, but I'm sort of curious, why do you think that film still works today? And is there anything you learned on that film that you even maybe even brought to this project? No, not that I brought, at least not consciously, but um, I was 21 um, and it was such a great opportunity. Nobody had any idea that it would be anything more than a horror movie or something. Uh, and, and in fact, it was received critically as if it was just another horror movie until people realized that Roman Polanski had really created a flawless, flawless horror movie. Um, and of course, at 21, I mean, I had I had done one movie and um, actually two, and a, and a TV series before that, but nothing as demanding as that film was in every scene for months and months, like from June until uh, late December, uh, every every shot. So uh, I learned, I learned, I went to places I'd never, I'd never gone before. And uh, therefore it was a lesson in um, going where you had to go emotionally. It was pretty demanding, so uh, in in that sense, I, I I learned a lot from it. I mean, he was a wonderful director to work for. Um, I don't like to talk about his personal life; enough people can do that. But as a director, he was brilliant, and he was you know engaged to the beautiful Sharon Tate, and that was all I knew then. And I, it, it was a dream to work for him because even though he, he at the time spoke little English, he was a wonderful actor. And he would act the scenes to John Cassavetti's irritation. He would act the scene, and then you knew exactly what he wanted. It, it was it was it was a wonderful experience. I'm going to to wrap you both on this because I would imagine, obviously, it goes without saying that the idea of, of someone stalking you is a terrifying one. And I would imagine that that's a much a much more real threat in the world of of celebrities. When you become famous, is the idea of someone like a watcher a much more prevalent fear? that you have to deal with than, than before your life of becoming famous? I, I, you know, I have, a, I have a little bit of it. I'm yeah. also a fearful person, so I'm, I, uh, I make things up. <laughs> so maybe those people aren't standing over there staring at me. Maybe they're just <laughs> staring off into the distance at someone behind me. <laughs> I think it's uh, probably a challenge to beat Margot. <laughs> <laughs> Margo, I did have the pleasure of, I, I did see you in the lobby of the hotel I'm in right now at the Four Seasons, and I was staring at you, but I, but you were kind enough to say hi to me and and, and greet me in person. So so, it, to, so to your point, I was staring, if it, if it makes you feel any better. Um, ladies, this is really what, what, what an absolute honor it is to be able to speak with you. This is not uh, an interview I take lightly. So from the bottom of my heart, I know you have a busy day. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. So much. Have Bye -bye. a wonderful day. See you later. Oh, we're 
going, we don't need roads.